So there I am, at the start, at Sochi. Conditions have been so bad that some of the best athletes have pulled out of the Olympics. The skier ahead of me is airlifted off course. It's my last chance. I'm determined to give it everything. Take a deep breath and push hard out of the start. Hi, everyone. Well, that was two years ago and marks the end of an incredible journey. When I was last at Bristol, it was 15 years ago, and I was studying sociology and snowboarding for the university snowboard team. I'm now a double Paralympian in one of the fastest and most dangerous Paralympic sports, alpine skiing. My favorite discipline is downhill. That's the fastest, where you find yourself racing down steep, icy slopes at 70 miles an hour on this. This is a monoski. As Paralympians, we raced in all the same disciplines as the able-bodied racers and down the same hills. But I haven't always been a wheelchair user. It all began in um, about 98, when I was a student here, my brother suggested that I could be good at border cross racing. You may have seen that on the TV. That's when four athletes raced down a course with big jumps and bank turns on their snowboards. So, despite having never spoken with a coach or snowboarded down a border cross course, I decided to enter the British National Championships. <laughs> and surprised myself by finishing in the time trial less than a second behind the favourite. Disappointingly, I crashed out of the race, so I left with neither British ranking nor medal. However, I gained something more powerful. I realised I had potential. The seed of my Olympic dream was sown. However, I only shared that dream with brother Ben, my parents had other ideas and suggested I used my hard-earned degree to get a real job. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I needed to earn money and I wanted an adventure. So, armed with a teaching qualification, I set out for Japan. Fascinated by the culture, learning the language, I, I was out dancing, I was having the time of my life. I spent my time snowboarding, when I wasn't working, and the dream of racing simmered away. And then I heard about a local border cross competition. And I thought, if I can win this, then I could write to companies, I could get sponsorship to fund my race training. I only told Ben that I was racing in the, in the race. And Ben's advice, was to push hard out the start, pick up maximum speed, and just try and get out in front as soon as possible. It was a grey, cloudy day. The snow was hard, icy. The jump's big, from me to, to the edge of the stage, 30 foot. I lined up with the Japanese girls, ready to race. I had to, had to give it my all. I was determined to do everything I could to win. So, shot out the start, over the first bumps, round the first corner, it was going well. Landed the first jump in the lead, carried on round the corners, over the next jump, and it was all going well. I carried on, and I hit the, hit the jump after that at high speed, and landed with a bit of a wobble, and then I felt a bit off balance. I just remember the turns coming up too quickly, and um, clung on round the, round the bank turns, hit the next jump, and then had a monumental crash. I don't remember the impact. I woke up, opened my eyes, 
and all I saw was my friend looking down anxiously at me, and I knew something wasn't right. My legs felt really heavy. I said to her, will you take my snowboard off? And she said, we already have. Then I had a horrendous ambulance drive. I wanted to punch the ambulance, the driver. Um, it hurt so much going around the corners. And the next thing I recall is waking up in hospital and Dr. Ito looking down at me and explaining that he'd operated to, to fix my broken thoracic spine. And he said, I predict you have about 98% chance that you'll never walk again. It was very painful. But worse than any physical pain was looking down at my legs, which refused to move. I knew I faced life in a wheelchair. And I, I've never felt so scared, so helpless. I, I just couldn't see a positive future. How could this be happening to me? Would I ever dance again, love again? And the thought that I would never snowboard again broke me into, I couldn't imagine how I would be able to have fun. And then a friend came to visit me and he showed me this picture. Doesn't that look awesome? <laughs> and that's when everything changed. He arranged for me to speak to the former Paralympian in the photo, and the guy explained to me how it felt to ride downhill on this mono ski. And I started to imagine sliding in the snow and how incredibly liberating it might feel. I knew it would be fun, and I said, I'm going to try that. Uh, the doctor said, not for a year, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I was fit enough to be repatriated, Dr. Rito said goodbye to me, waved and said, I'll see you in the Paralympics. <laughs> I then spent four very long and difficult months in Stoke Mandeville. <sighs> really tough times, but having this picture at the end of my bed lifted me when times were really tough. It wasn't easy. My, the first time my brothers came to visit me, all we did was laugh uncontrollably all evening. <laughs> That's what I remember, because there was so much emotion to let out somehow. They loved the idea that I was going to ride in a monoski. My mum, understandably, not so much. <laughs> I moved home. And thanks to mum's dogged determination to help me with daily physio exercises, I regained some movement in my legs, astonishing the doctors. But it, it wasn't easy. I felt trapped in a body that wasn't mine. One day, I got so frustrated that I hurled a glass of water at the wall in my mum's living room. Dad's advice was to get a job. So I volunteered in a local school. I started trying new sports. My confidence in my new identity grew. I then met Pete, the wonderful man who became my husband. And then I spent the anniversary of my accident abroad with my older brother, Luke, learning just how difficult it is to balance on a single ski. <laughs> but I stuck at it got back up, and by the end of the week, I was loving it. I came home, I practiced as much as I could, and I was eventually um, trialled and invited to join the British Disabled Ski Team. Thank you. Um, so I was on the development squad of the GB team. I'll never forget my first camp. I was in awe. I was with Britain's best skiers. They said to me, we don't have any money, so go away and get good, which is what I did. Two years after my accident, I was in a competition for the first time, sitting in the start gate, absolutely terrified. <laughs> I had a panic attack, I couldn't breathe. 
But in time, I learned to manage my own fears. I worked really hard at it. And after the first season, the coach said, Anna, I think you have the potential to get to the next Paralympics, Vancouver 2010, but you're one of the least experienced athletes on the circuit and it's only two years away. So that's where the hard work really began. It became my sole focus. Determination, grit, resolve. I think it's like a ball of energy inside us. It's like a little, it's like a little ball bearing that when agitated, gets energised. You really notice it in toddlers when they really, really want something. They go red, they start to shake. It's like that ball is burning inside them. They will do anything they can to get what they want. As adults, we all have that inside us. We've just learned to repress it. Life gets in the way. But it's a powerful force. As a team, we were up at five o'clock in the morning, stretching out on the hill for hours in all weathers, winds that will knock you over, minus 40 degrees C, where if you take your glove off, your hand is so cold it aches for, for the next half an hour. We were driven by success and by the buzz of the sport. And it was my sole focus. I did everything I could. So I got selected for the British Paralympic team four years after I got paralysed. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I was there in the British team kit, on the plane, in the Olympic village, with all the best skiers in the world. I felt a bit out of place, to be honest, but I remember sitting in the start gate. You could hear the crowds from the top of the hill. I'd never competed in front of crowds or in front of TV cameras. I felt quite sick from the fear of not, not performing, but I skied down. I managed to get to the bottom of the first of the two slalom runs. Then I phoned Ben and he reminded me to believe in myself. I went out there, took a deep breath, pushed hard out to the start gate and I skied the best run of my life. And as rank outsider, I finished sixth in the world. It was the most incredible experience. And I decided I was going to get to Sochi 2014, the next Paralympics. Four years after that, I'd won six World Cup medals. I'd qualified for all five disciplines in the Sochi Paralympics. I had proved that I stood a chance of a Paralympic medal. I was just outside the British qualifying criteria for the team, for the Paralympic team. But perhaps a little bit arrogant, I thought, how can they not take me? I stand a good, pretty good chance, better chance than many. And then, queuing up in the airport, on the way to World Cups in Canada, alongside a load of other international athletes, I was told that I hadn't been selected for the Paralympic team. My coach then avoided eye contact for the whole journey, and I refused to show that I was upset. I eventually cornered him and said, do you want to take me? And he said, Anna, the way you're skiing now, yes, I do. And I was going to do everything I could. The fight was on. So during those races, I stayed up all hours. Brother Luke and a lawyer friend helped me craft an appeal letter. Unfortunately, the, the, the appeal worked. The decision was overturned. I was on the British Paralympic team on my way to Sochi. Picture this at the top of the Paralympic downhill. Conditions are horrendous. The snow is so soft that it's dangerous. As athletes, we want, we want the snow to be hard and icy so that the course holds up. 
Helmet on, goggles on. I'm determined to give this everything I've got. I've won, or I was fastest in the first training run. I know I can win this race. I take a deep breath and push hard out of the start. And this is what happened. 34-year-old from Warwick, Anna Turney is out of the gate and on course. Her husband and physio Peter Walton back at home watching this so closely on the TV. 0.72 is where Anna Turney needs to keep it. 0.72 has Turney on track for bronze. Good job here. Perfect, uh, perfectly on line coming on to Beersburg and absolutely no problem on the jump. Finds a straight line. She's got time to find, but she's got good speed coming down the steep here. She's found a straighter line than any of the big names. Oh! Runs very close to the nets, though. Underestimating how quickly she was going. She's done a great job of keeping herself composed. It's horribly oh! rough here and turning us down. down. Oh, that's a nasty fall on the very bumpy backside of the lake jump. They're going to have to do some work on that section of the course. Anna, though, oh, great testament to her physical conditioning. She is unhurt, probably dented somewhat, I suspect. And what a shame, she was going so, so well. Well, Turney, who was in the bronze medal position at the first split time, just gets a, a little light on the lake jump, goes down. It's very bumpy through all of these heavy sit skis, landing in the same position and creating little bumps and rollers in the snow. And once that ski's released from the sit ski, there's uh, no choice for the athlete but just to let gravity take them down the mountain. The good news is Anna Turney is unhurt. I was skiing so well. It was crazy bumpy. 65 miles an hour to a standstill in nine seconds. Lying on the snow, utterly despondent. I picked myself up and two days later, I was racing in the Paralympic Super G on the same hill. There was a long hold because the athlete ahead of me crashed but I pushed hard out of the start, gave it all I'd got, and I got to the bottom and I was in second. <sighs> then I was knocked down into fourth place. The TV interviewer then said to me, how disappointed do you feel to have miss just missed out on a Paralympic medal? <sighs> <laughs> My media training went out the window at that point. <laughs> oh. I went up into the stands where my brother Luke gave me a massive hug and that lifted me out of the depths of despair. It made me realise that it wasn't actually the end of the world. My teammates won medals and I was pleased for them, but I felt like a failure. I felt angry, I, I, felt, I felt like hurting myself. I, I felt like I'd let everyone down. Back at Heathrow, waiting to go through to arrivals, all I wanted to do was hide in my husband's arms. I didn't want to see anybody for a long time. But going out into arrivals and seeing all my friends, there waving flags and cheering, that made me realise just how proud I'd made everybody. I've had tough times. I've, I've faced some real challenges, but we all have difficulties. We all, we all have difficult moments. We have to keep moving forwards. I set my sights high and I had wonderful support, which helped me to grasp opportunities and to turn my life around. I competed at the very top level. Looking back now, and it's taken until now, I think, well, I, I can't really believe that I pointed my ski down that hill and I had the courage to do what I did. And I realise that I actually have achieved an awful lot. I'm, I'm now a mum 
So five months ago, I had Sylvie. <laughs> and, um, well, that's another whole big challenge in itself. And I tell you, that girl, even at five months, really shows some determination. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with one final thought. Whatever happens, let your dreams, and we all have dreams, let your dreams ignite that little ball bearing of energy. Get it rolling. Because with that, you have the power to go out and achieve really incredible things. Whatever you do, push hard out the start. Thank you for listening. <laughs>